quick sit rep on the Le Mans trip. Uh, so far, the spend on fuel is £260. Uh, so you can pick up Radio Le Mans, where you will find out everything that's going on in English language broadcast, which is pretty cool. Uh -huh. On dining table. This is how you do Le Mans. So you may have missed it in the time lapse in the previous video, but we actually did a lap of the circuit on the way into the campsite. Now, most of the Le Mans track is actually public highways. And here you'll see us joining at Tete Rouge, which is the top of what's known as the Mulsanne Strait. Now, this is a six kilometre stretch of public highway, which has turned racetrack. Uh, however, this is now broken up by a number of chicanes after the Peugeot P88 hit a staggering 405 kilometers an hour in 1998. At the end of the Mulsan Strait at Mulsan Village, uh, you exit the racetrack and the public highway goes to a roundabout uh, before rejoining to head off towards Indianapolis. So we rejoin after Mulsan Corner and head off to Indianapolis and Arnage, two corners that feel surprisingly tight even at road speed, let alone at race pace. And then we're back off the track again before we rejoin for the final blast down towards the Porsche curves, where access to the track ends and it becomes dedicated track uh, up past the Forge Cane and to the start finish straight. It's pretty cool that you can uh, you can get on the track here and you can only do this at the very beginning of the week. From Wednesday onwards, the track is closed for qualifying, testing and all the support races. So worth getting down to Le Mans early just for the track drive. So camp is all set up, time to go and explore around the pit. So we're going to take you with us. We're going to go have a look at some of the cool stuff that's happening. You can already hear free practice in the background going on, nice and noisy. And if I flip the camera, you can see the Ferris wheel, you can see the Porsche Experience Center, and just beyond that, you should just about be able to make out the start and finish train. So let's go have a wander. And you can also see why now you need a decent hat with a bit of coverage because it gets hot here. On the long wander up to the entrance of the uh, racetrack, don't forget to check the car park. How cool is that? And this. What did I say about the campsites? Now that is a way to travel. So if you haven't got tickets already, you can buy them out here and you come in right by the grandstands here. <laughs> so as you come up the pit straight, this is the ACO building uh, and you can get your pass to the ACO here which allows you into a cafe and a special grandstand behind the massive Porsche logo here. Uh, also in the basement of this building you will find clean toilets and showers. So uh, if your campsite is looking a bit grotty on the Saturday morning this is a really useful place to know about. It's a few quid for, uh, for a pass uh, and you can add extra guests on for about 40 euros a piece, um, but it is well worthwhile. And as we're walking around, I'll show you all the other little ACO areas you can get into. But next, as we continue up the start finish straight, the fan village here, where there's lots of cool stuff to get stash uh, and more models than you've ever seen in your entire life. Model cars, that is, before you get any ideas. Uh, right, let's give it a wonder. And it appears changes are afoot. This is new this year. They've actually finally got some disabled access in for some of the grandstand areas. Well done, ACO. About time. Lots of pretty cool displays in this case. 11, 11 RSR. So as you come up trackside, there is the museum over there. You can come under the track and into the fan zone.
you see, the French police do things a little bit differently around here. So we're continuing up the outside of the circuit towards the Dunlop Bridge and towards Tet Rouge. And we're gonna go over that bridge to see the other ACO area. Uh, you'll probably hear in the background, we've got a slow zone going on for a car that's off. You can probably just about make out in the background. Uh, so all the road to Le Mans folks are driving through nice and slowly. 80 kilometers an hour, which is insane. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully once that car's recovered, they're gonna be flat out again. <laughs> the famous Dunlop Bridge. And so we have crossed the Dunlop Bridge, which is just a bit front to the right. And you see La Chapelle, which is the main area for the ACO for viewing and all the data screens. So we're gonna go and have a quick look in there and show you around why it's worth being a member. So this is what all the fuss is about. Now that is a trophy. So, excuse the noisy French radio in the background, but we now have somewhere nice we can sit and watch the race if it's hammering it down. And we've got all the data you might wish about what's going on. So you can track your favourite cars, see how they're getting on, see who's in the pit, see who's leading each class at the bottom. It's pretty freaking awesome. So the other big advantage of the ACO, you'll see with the other side of the Dunlop Bridge, this is an area you don't get access to without ACO membership. All the way down here, as opposed to open access over here. So while I'm here, I'll also point out, so what you can see down there, the set of curves, that's Tet Rouge, and at the top of there, you enter the Mall Farm straight, uh, which is what you'll have seen on the time lapse at the beginning of the video. So that's kind of the top half of the circuit. It's a long straight right down the back to Mall Farm and Arnage, and then back by a Porsche curve to the Porsche Cane. So it is worth coming up to the pit straight for qualifying because you can get into the grandstands for free during qualifying.
sunshine a few seconds ago. Well, that's the end of qualifying. Rain has seen paid to that, so we're gonna head back to camp, but not before another stroll through the car park to see some more amazing stuff. Like this, for example. Just, you know, a couple of casual Porsches and a Ferrari, as you do. Nice little cheeky C63, DBS. You'd never guess that, would you? Lovely. And they just keep coming. So the 924 we spotted earlier has now been joined by a 944 that is very low. Nice. Uh, looks like this one might be fairly well-traveled. 